Thank you, Finley. At your service, sir. Hmm, this odour is very strong indeed, but the whole neighbourhood as such has a dreadful stench. Finley might have an idea as to what this jar that contained. What do you want, Doctor? You're right. The pieces of the jar that your tenant broke do give off a strange smell. It's true. That's quite normal, given his trade. Yes, and what would the trade be of your strange tenant? A doctor like yourself, I believe. Dr. Tumblety, a foreigner. Canadian, perhaps. Dr. Tumblety. It might be interesting to know more about him. Thank you, Finley. At your service, sir. Oh, it's you. I'm coming. Dr. Watson, how are you? Well, and yourself? And how's your uncle? Oh, he sleeps a lot, but it hasn't seemed to be suffering. Your medicine has worked wonders. Thank you again. It was the least I could do. I have come to see you about a certain leather apron. Have you heard of him? Oh, yes, of course. Terrible things are said about that man. Have you ever come across him? Goodness gracious, no. But I know that he has threatened and taken many girls in uh, my situation. I don't know what more I can say, but um, Bella would be able to tell you some. Who is Bella? Bella Pullman. She's the landlady of the place where I... Uh, I could take you there if you like. Please do. It's me. It's Lucy. This gentleman would like to speak to Bella. It's the doctor who helped me. I must leave to return to my uncle. Thanks again. If you'd be patient, Madam Bella will arrive in a moment. Good evening. I am Dr. Watson. It is young Lucy who told me to come see you. Ah, so you're the good Samaritan who saved her uncle without asking for anything in return. And now you've come to see me, no doubt, to explain that the poor little thing doesn't belong here and you will see to her future. Well, if you expect me to let her leave with you... <laughs> it's not that, ma'am. Uh, you should know I am a married man. And why should that matter? I believe there has been a misunderstanding. The reason that Lucy sent me here is that you may be able to give me some information about Leather Apron. Are you a doctor or a constable? I am most certainly a doctor, but I am acting in this matter in a private capacity, and I would like to find this man. Well, if you're able to rid us of him, I'll give you a week's worth of free passes. That man is a thorn in our sides. He spies on the girls in the streets and watches them inside the houses, spying through the windows. And as soon as they're finished with a client, he jumps on them without any warning and forces them to give him their money. I've never seen him, but one of my girls was attacked by this man and she said that he wore a leather apron and carried a knife. And his face, oh, he has a horrible head with rat's eyes and a deformed mouth. She even said that she knew his name, um, Pizer or Pizer, I think. But I don't know where she can be found. Margie Nutcracker, the girl I'm talking about, could tell you more, but I had to let her go last week. Why did you let Margie go? The poor girl caught a shameful sickness and the symptoms have attacked her face, if you know what I mean. So I gave her notice and a little bit to help her along. I don't know where she is now, but she'll certainly be getting treatment at the clinic if she's still in the neighbourhood. Did you speak to the police? Ah, what would they do? Who cares about the girls in the streets? 
would you have received a visit from another doctor, a stranger by the name of Tumblety? I'm just like you, Doctor. Sworn to secrecy in my profession. But as I've taken a fancy to you, I can tell you that this name is not unknown to me. And if you do me a little favour, it is possible I might remember something about him. Ahem. <clears throat> uh, what kind of favour must I do for you? You see that man over there? He's a rich artist, a painter, a regular client round here. Well, yesterday, he came and left his cane in the umbrella stand in the hall before going into one of the rooms. But when he returned to this room, the cane had disappeared. It's a cane with a massive silver knob. It must be worth a fortune. He threatened to call the police unless he got free services in my establishment for a year. I'll be forced to accept, unwillingly, of course, given the services that he's demanding, unless the cane is found. Did you question the residents regarding the theft? They didn't see anything, and there's not one of them that would risk stealing from a client here. Who was in the room when your weasel of a client was in the chambers? There were a few that came and went, but Mary could tell you better than I can, because she was the one at the counter yesterday. Thank you, ma'am. No problem, my angel. <laughs> what happened to this rug? Oh, it's when we got a coal yesterday. I asked the young man to fill the pail. He came back to put it down, but his feet were covered in soot and he made a black print. Madame Bella said it was my fault and I got a shilling's penalty. I also have to clean the print and it's no picnic. He has immense feet, that boy. I heard that there was a theft yesterday. Did you see anything? No, and I was here the whole time. <laughs> Who delivers the coal? It's never the same person. I've never seen that lad before. Do you always keep an eye on the coat stand? Oh, yes. Well, when the coal delivery came, a client came out of the chambers and stopped me from seeing the boy who brought the bucket of coal. You don't think he would have taken advantage? Until next time, miss. With pleasure, sir. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening, my dear man. I was led to believe that you're a doctor. None of the residents of this establishment are among my patients, sir. Oh, you're not here as a doctor, but as a man, then. I understand. This is my kind of place, too. It's in these houses in Whitechapel that you find the girls that are the most natural and definitely the most docile. Your way of speaking about these women is not that of a gentleman, sir. I heard that you were the victim of a robbery here. Oh, I'm not complaining. The loss of that walking stick will certainly bring me a very pleasant compensation. What does your cane look like? The stick is ebony, about 35 inches long. The round knob is made from chiselled silver with a ring around the middle of the same workmanship. Just like the tip, for that matter. If you find it, don't tell a soul. Keep it for yourself, got it? Well, goodbye, sir. Goodbye, or until next time. And good evening. <laughs> A large black footprint. Good evening, Doctor. My name is Dr. Watson. Pleased to meet you. Good evening. I am Dr. Gibbons. Likewise. I have come to see you about one of your patients. Margie uh, goes by the nickname Nutcracker, who gets her prescription from the clinic. 